All right, guys. Back with another vi video. Uh, so, uh, first off, disclaimer. Uh, I don't know everything. <laughs> I do make mistakes, uh, just like everybody else, and it's part of the learning process. So, uh, we may make mistakes along the way, uh, but I'll try not to. Uh, so, anyway, I'm doing this in a very particular way, and I'm going to go over it with you guys. And uh, then in the next video, uh, we'll... Uh, start setting up for two-handed weapons. All right, so I'll just go ahead and show you What this looks like? So this pistol is actually attached to the weapon R bone and I modified that and there's a very specific reason future reason why I want to use the weapon R bone uh, that's attached to the hand and if your character doesn't have a weapon or a bone, uh, eh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's preferable that they have a weapon or a bone. But, I mean, uh, it's it's better than IK bones. Uh, I think it's a better approach than the old IK bone method. And I'll, I'll go into that uh, later. Uh, whenever we do two-handed weapons, I'll, I'll discuss that with you and why. I went with that. So anyway, just to get started for you guys who don't know how to do it, open up the ALS and it's ALS. Uh, some people are telling me, uh, asking me what it is. Advanced locomotion system. This right here, uh, Calvin Longmire uh, made this. So you can look for Longmire lo Locomotion on here. It's Advanced Locomotion System V4. You can search for it right inside of here. And the same guy that made this uh, some years ago was actually is actually one of the like tech technical animators or whatever the you want to call the title uh, for creating this uh, motion matching system inside of here. And so. Yeah, we don't actually need to change any of this stuff, uh, but there is a disclaimer. Uh, actually, also, by the way, I'm backing this stuff up now uh, so that uh, next time if I experiment in here, I don't have to just explain what I did. I can walk y'all guys through it. So I did take that precaution this time. Uh, also, uh, yeah, so you right click and you go to asset actions inside of this ALS project and you go to export and just export them into a uh, folder. It'll uh, don't change any of that. Just leave it like it is and say export, save, export. You're going to export the M9 and the M4A1 under the advanced locomotion V4 props and meshes uh, because we're going to be setting the setting up the M4A1 uh, with the animation system in the next video. So you may as well go ahead and bring that one over as well. So anyway, uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and explain to you. Uh, so down in the description, I'm just going to go ahead and include all of these uh, animations. And I thought I duplicated that. Okay, well, I didn't duplicate that, but that's okay, I guess. Uh, so, I'll, ex I'll explain it to you anyway. So, I'll, I'll include all these animations, uh, and actually, I'll just go ahead and export all these animations. Do I already have a... I deleted that folder. Yeah, that's right. So, I'll create a new folder. You don't have to export these animations. Um, I'm just going to show you guys how to how to import them in case some of you don't know. So I'm exporting these right now. That way, and they'll be in the description. And so what you would do is you would go to the animation and you would right click it and go to re 
uh, re-import with new source. And then what you would do is you would find the animation with that same name in this uh, AO aim offset folder and just double click it and it'll re-import it. And then you can save it. And the reason why is because I had to go in here and I had to uh, I had to position the weapon R bone uh, for this process. So we're going to be using the weapon R bone and for especially for the two-handed weapons. And so we want all of our weapons to use the weapon R bone. So I may as well prep the uh, single handed ones for it as well. Uh, that way they're all using the same bone and we can just drag and drop our guns onto the weapon R bone and it'll just automatically be where it needs to be for those animations. So uh, also if we come back over here, the reason why I just went ahead and did the entire hand rather than just the fingers like they did in ALS is because the weapon R bone is attached to the hand R. So if you look under the hand R, uh, you'll see that there's an unweighted bone called weapon R. Now, technically you could just say, okay, not the hand, but thumb uh, O1R, ring O1R, pinky O1R, middle O1R, and index O. One R and weapon R, and you could have each of those bones listed under here, but not the hand. You could do that, uh, but I just decided to do the hand. If there's any problems in the future, we may have to go back and do that. So, like I said, I'm not perfect. I do make mistakes. There's a lot going on here. This is pretty advanced stuff. So, uh, anyway, I just wanted to explain that to you. And now for these, I will just go ahead and export these uh, to, and I'll export this one into the main folder. I did strip the uh, curves off of it because I had it imported mine with the curves on it. We don't need the curves. They do have a performance hit. Uh, so uh, just a backstory on how I figured that out. At one point I was messing around with ALS and I had retargeted some animations for some CC characters and they have a lot of curves. And when I baked the animation, it added like 100, 200 curves to the animation. And for some reason I kept getting uh, uh, performance hits where all of a sudden out of nowhere, my frame rate would drop down to like five, 10 frames per second. And I had no idea what it was. I started doing some profiling, come to find out it was all those curves. I deleted them, the problem went away. So uh, curves do have uh, performance hits. So I just take that uh, to note. Anyway, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to edit and sequencer and I've already created one, but you don't have to, you could edit with FK control rig and it'll create a new one, but it'll unlink this one. It'll unlink this one whenever you create a new one. So I'm just going to open this one. And this is why I like using additive layers, because like I said, on an additive layer, you can go back and fix stuff uh, because you're not having to key it frame by frame. You can just go change one single keyed frame and that's it. And so what I did, and I'll just go ahead and do it again, even though I already have one in here, but I did this. I drug this out in here and I went to actor to sequencer, add M10. That's the one I have selected here. And now by default, a lot of people will just stop here and they'll go and they'll attach it. Don't do that. Always convert to spawnable. Uh, that's something that I always do. You can tell if it has a little lightning bolt right here. That means it's uh, spawnable. If you don't do this, if you save and close this and you decide, okay, I want to open this uh, level sequencer in a different level uh, because I no longer want to mess with it inside of this level. Well, you can't do that because everything is linked, uh, is referencing things inside of this level. So that's why I make them spawnable. Also, if you do render sequences, it can cause problems there too. If it's not spawnable, they might end up in the wrong location when you're rendering your your uh, your movie. So I'm just pointing that out. So press this plus sign right here and go to attach and select that animation. And it'll ask you what bone you want to attach it to. And you're going to say weapon R. And then it'll probably be offset like this. You can press this reset button to reset the transforms of it. And that's where it ends up. Now yours is probably going to be 
more like like this and so you'll have to come over here and uh, right click and do this create ad additive track and then on that additive additive track select that bone and then you're going to move it into position and rotate it and obviously mine is all offset because I offset the weapon but you get the point so uh, I'll go into this again later on in another video but you see how I screwed this up right here so I can just actually delete this and it puts it back how it was unaltered that's why I like additive tracks real easy to undo what you did uh, so it's like having a history uh, that you can go back and uh, you know, it's like having an undo button on stuff that you've changed. So anyway, that's how that works. Uh, after you've done, after you've positioned it where you want to position it, you can, uh, you can come over here. This is what you'll see. Uh, and you'll, whenever you're in animation mode right here, animation mode, and you can say poses and then create pose and you can name your pose and say create asset. I've already created mine right here and then what you can do is is you can come out of here and let's say for whatever reason um i wanted that weapon or bone to be in that specific oh you know i'm not going to do that because it's going to mess mine up but i'll show you how you can do it i'll open up this one and I'll just open up the one I already have uh, just for demonstration purposes, but I would uh, select, uh, I would make sure that my, that my additive track right here, and honestly, it's better to, uh, to call this, uh, to rename these after you create them. Uh, that way you can identify which one is which, and you don't have to guess, uh, but you can move your cursor over here and you'll see it says additive on it when you move your cursor over it. So make sure you have your additive track selected. Press this select button, uh, select controls button. It'll automatically select uh, that bone control for you. And then you can uh, check that key button and paste the pose. And it'll automatically paste it in here and key it for you. All you have to do then is save it and close it and that's it. That's all you have to do. So. With that out of the way, uh, the reason why I am doing this is because in some cases during animations, uh, like for example, if, the, if, if you're holding a rifle, if you're holding a rifle this way, uh, then yeah, you're, you're going to turn, twist the wrist, but you're not going to want to twist the wrist to make the gun completely look like this. You're actually going to want to also spin that weapon or bone as well uh, and if you don't then it's going to look unnatural and you're going to have to bend your wrists on your character in an unnatural way so if you go and you look at lyra animations you'll realize that in some of the, a lot of the lyra animations uh, uh like where they're doing the uh the the uh rifle butt stroke uh animation where they're hitting the enemy with the the butt of the rifle during that animation, they're actually turn, uh, animating this weapon R bone and spinning it. Uh, so there's a specific reason why they started using these weapon R bones. They're very useful. They kind of serve the same purpose as the old IK handgun bone did. So uh, it's just more convenient uh, because what you can do is you can create a virtual bone off of the weapon R bone pointing to the hand L and what that does is if you do spin that weapon then your virtual bone will will be in relation to the orientation of this and it'll be offset with that spin on your weapon R bone if you don't then your weapon R I mean then your weapon will come out of out of the left hand and it'll go this way as this is spinning this way, if he's holding the uh, the rifle, the barrel of the rifle, and uh, that's the reason why. Uh, so you'll understand that whenever we set up the the rifle uh, later. So just uh, letting you know on that. So before I go, obviously I have to show you all how to uh, 
set this up on here. So all you have to do is get this skeletal mesh and just drag it in here and uh, make it a child of this mesh and then press this parent socket button and search for a weapon and select the weapon R and then just zero that out and now it's perfectly where it needs to be so that's all you have to do and that pretty much sums it up guys i'll see you in the next video where we will set up the m4a1 uh, animations and i'll explain more about that ik stuff <laughs>